Welcome back to the garage everyone, thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to look at how to restore the rubber parts in your restoration using natural wintergreen oil. If you've been following along with the CB750 rebuild series, you'll know that I've finished rebuilding the carburetors in the airbox and now it's time to reattach the carburetor to the engine. Uh, unfortunately the car boots are petrified and I haven't really been able to find a good source for new ones. I'll link a card here for you uh, leading to the CB750 playlist. What I'm going to do is give you all the information that you need in the first few minutes of the video to try this technique for yourself. Then if you want to stick around for the rest of the video I'll give you a little bit more information and you can see how I applied this technique myself to fix up those car boots. So I ordered 300 milliliters of wintergreen oil. You can see me here adding it and poured it into a one gallon glass container. Then what I did was I took 900 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol and I added that to the mixture as well. That makes for a three to one ratio. Uh, I chose to use pure uh, natural distilled wintergreen oil. And that was because after um, doing a little bit of research, I had heard some reports of uh, people mentioning that they had gotten swelling in some of the rubber parts that they were trying to soften and I was trying to avoid that and it seemed like the natural wintergreen oil wasn't really causing that as much. The wintergreen oil smell is quite noticeable but it wasn't actually as strong as I was expecting it to be. Here you see the first carburetor boot that I added to the wintergreen oil mixture. So I put that carburetor boot in the wintergreen oil for one week. So just a quick recap, uh, it's pure wintergreen oil, not I'm going to call synthetic wintergreen oil and I mixed it with uh, 90 plus percent isopropyl alcohol at a ratio of 3 to 1. See the results? They're quite dramatic considering how hardened the boots were before I added them to the oil. I took those carburetor boots and I put them in that mixture for one week. I'm sure you could leave them in there for longer than a week but uh, to me they seemed more than pliable enough uh, to reinstall them on the bike and if I need to soften them up anymore I can always put them back in the mixture. So here you can see the overall condition of the carburetor boots before I started the process um, but they do need a good cleaning and there isn't any damage that I can see. I can't see any visible um, cracks or splitting or anything. The only problem with them is that they've lost all their pliability and they're just way too hard to be able to easily uh, reinstall the carburetor. So I'd say the carb boots are in way worse condition than the velocity stacks, but still pretty good overall. So here's a quick review on how the velocity stacks turned out. Basically all I used was Armorall and I soaked them in that to return a little bit of the vitality to the rubber. But I would say that the carburetor boots are in way worse condition than the velocity stacks just due to their exposure to the environment. Here you can see I haven't mixed up the wintergreen yet but I'll give you a quick recap. I mixed the wintergreen and the alcohol at a ratio of 3 to 1. And what I did was I ordered 300 milliliters of pure wintergreen oil and 900 milliliters of alcohol. I'd say that the 3 to 1 ratio is pretty forgiving. Uh, I think you could definitely mix it 4 to 1 if you wanted to. Uh, what I ended up doing to clean the boots was to throw them in the vapor blaster. Uh, I did see a video from Vapor Honing Technologies where they cleaned a set of carburetor boots doing this so I thought I'd give it a try. It works pretty good and I guess it's something that you could maybe do with a wire brush or something but the Vapor Blaster did a really good job and in the end they come out looking like brand new even though they're still hard as rock. So even though I think they're probably in generally uh, good condition they're still going to need to be cleaned because when I soak these in the wintergreen oil I want to make sure that it has every opportunity to soak into all parts of the boot. The Vapor Blaster did an amazing job. The boots look like they're brand new again but looks are deceiving in this case. They're still quite stiff. 
Now we have to give them their wintergreen oil treatment. So what I did was I put carburetor boot number one in the wintergreen oil just by itself. And after one day, I could see that it, they were already starting to it was already starting to soften up and it didn't look like it was affecting it adversely any. I, I did a comparison, there wasn't any swelling after one day. So I rolled the dice and I put the rest of the carburetor boots in. You'll see here in a second, once I start showing you the day-by-day -day effects of the wintergreen oil, it's already on day two for carburetor boot number one. The rest of them are on day one. Okay, so here we're going to see the day-by-day uh, -day progression of how much the rubber on these boots is softening inside the wintergreen. Uh, this is carburetor boot number one, which is already, like I said, two days in. And then next I'm going to compare it to one of the other boots that has been in there for one day and you can see. So quite a difference after two days for carburetor number, carburetor boot number one. And that one there has only been in there for one day. Definite noticeable difference. So here we are on day three, I guess you can call it. So as expected, the thinner parts of the rubber are softening quicker than the thicker parts. The thicker part of the boot there is what attaches to the side of the engine. So as you can imagine, you start to get diminishing returns on just exactly how soft the the rubber is getting. It may be interesting to do a test to leave a set in there for like a month or something and see what happens to them, see how soft they get. So right here we have day number four for boot one, day number three for the rest of them. Carburetor boot number one's coming along nicely. It's way easier to uh, deform that than it was after even the first day. Really starting to notice now the thicker part is uh, softening up. Starting to catch up a little bit to the thinner parts of the boot. I'll have a look at one of the other boots. So, good progress. So I found the results over the next couple of days to be pretty much the same. So I've jumped forward to the end of the week here. This is the day that I decided that I'll be taking them all out. So, and you can see here in a second, the, uh, the amount that they've softened up over seven days is quite impressive. So that's carburetor boot number one. Here we'll check out one of the other ones. And you'll see what I'm saying. It's pretty much the same. So while I do think that it would definitely soften up more if you left it in there for another a few more days, um, I decided to pull them out after seven days. So we'll get those cleaned up and the uh, winter green put away and we'll uh, test that on some other things in the future so here we have all the carburetor boots on the carburetors they were very easy to get back on and they look great so if you've stuck it out to the end uh, thanks for hanging out and uh, i hope you found this interesting and uh, i'll catch you in the next one